taking you through the strategies to learn and remember the macroeconomics concepts in a, on a very base level through some analogies uh, so that you can remember more ideas more than anything else and through the storytelling. The key concepts in this particular one, we are going to cover up circular flow, GDP and business cycles. So we know it, economics is all about production, consumption and exchange, right? So uh, thinking on those lines at a macro level, we can split the economy into two major sectors the producer sector, that's the production here, so firms and the consumer section, that is the uh, households. Um, now ask yourself a simple question, what do I get from the firms? You can start off from there. So what do I get from the firms? I get goods and services. Ask yourself, where did I get the money from for these goods and services? I got that from firm. Okay, so if I got that from firm, what did I actually do for the firms that I got that money? Well, I had worked for the firm or maybe I had provided some resource to the firm, which is why I have been paid. So typically, I got the money from the firms as a part of my factor payments. And this factor payment here is, you, you, we could have any of the resources, land, labor, capital or enterprise. Now, some people may even think it through or, you know, just to challenge thinking, oh no, I, I, I just uh, got this money from my mom and dad because they are the ATMs, oh that's fine, but mom and dad would have provided some resource to the firm and that's where they got the money from. So the bottom line stays the same, the factor payments coming from the firms. And when you're buying goods and services, obviously the firms are not giving to you for free. So when you're buying those goods and services, again, you pay and that's called the consumption spending. So this is typically how the money keeps going round and round between the two major sectors, the firms and the households. Now you can visualize this economy as a balloon. And why did I say to visualize it as a balloon? Because it'll help you to understand a lot of other concepts if you just had that idea in mind. Now we do know that when it comes to the economy, it's not just, you know, uh, the two sectors, that's the household and the firms and the money doesn't keep going round and round like that because you would have heard, you know, people, people do save when they're earning, they have to be paying taxes. So in those contexts, definitely the money tends to move out of this flow. And when we're saying out of this flow, I'm re just reflecting or uh, actually taking you through only one uh, idea here that is how the money can actually move out. How it comes back is a different story. So right now let's get under the mode Ketris Paribus, that is everything else remaining the same. So we just want to take up uh, on what context the money can come out of this flow. So yes, the very first context that the money comes out of the flow is the savings because if you choose to save, obviously you're not spending in other words. So if if out of $10, today you decided to save $2, in other words, you're spending only $8. Yeah? Now, when I'm talking of that $10 in your hand, was definitely after the tax income that you had paid. Maybe your actual work was worth $12 and you got $12 in hand and out of that you paid the government tax of $2. And therefore, for you were left only with $10. Now, out of that $10, you decided to save $2. Now, you're left with $8 in this flow. You get it? So this is precisely what we are saying here, that the money, and then I'm saying you as in, we're looking at more or less everyone does that, right? So on an average, the money is moving out. Even if you are not saving, maybe others are saving. So yeah, that's, that's a very straight on idea. Some people would say, I don't save anything at all. Fine, you don't save, but then the economy is still having that saving in some form or the other, right? Similarly, the imports, remember the word import must be replaced in your head by the word buy, buying. Only when you buy, it's an import. So if you're going for education to another country, what is it for your country? It's an import. Why? Because you are buying education from there. If you're going for, a, uh, you know, for tourism to another country, it is again, you are buying a holiday there. So you're spending money. And that's where again, it is an import. Is that clear? So uh, on these three contexts, the money is moving out, but then there are ways that the money may actually go in. But let's see what happens if the money comes out of this flow. Yes, you can see what happened to this balloon. 
whoa, the whole air has come out. And because the air has come out, the, the, the balloon has become smaller. Typically, this is what happens to the economy. If the money goes out from this flow because of the savings or because of the taxes or because of the imports, the economy would shrink. And what are the three injections now into this flow? What would the banks do with your money that they have gotten as a part of savings? The firms will naturally, you know, uh, get to have those funds through the banks or through the financial institutions. So in other words, this money comes back to the flow in the, in the form of investments. And similarly, when it comes to the government, whatever the taxes are there, uh, the government tends to spend back on the economy in terms of the infrastructure building and so forth. And uh, the third one is relating to the overseas. Of course, um, if, if, you, if your country is buying certain goods and services, possibly it's selling as well. And that's where the country would get some income in. And this is typically the circular flow. I can still visualize it. I mean, there are so many ways, but to me, it still looks like a big balloon and I can really... If you really look at it, yeah, it is, it is looking so much like a balloon, right? And what's happening when I'm just squeezing out the air, gosh, it's just gone off. It became contracted. The economy was into contraction mode. And just onto the other side, it is... Uh, going to expand if there's more money coming in. And that's what I was trying to do when I showed you the idea of balloon. So uh, a very, very simple way of remembering this idea. Think of the economy as a balloon. If the money moves out of this flow, the economy contracts. And if the money moves into the flow, the economy expands. What are the three injections? Investments, government spending, and exports. What are the three withdrawals from this flow? Uh, three withdrawals from this flow are the savings, taxes, and the imports, right? So these are uh, the context where we can think of. Now, how do I remember the calculation of the GDP? And what is this GDP to start with, I need to know. So what is GDP? Sorry. What is GDP? It is the market value of final goods and services produced within an economy. So the idea here is we are referring to all the goods and services that are produced in this economy by the firms. And of course, the households are providing the services. You can think it on those lines, that's fine. But uh, we are segregating, you know, so even when a household is providing a service, it becomes a part of the firm there, right? So uh, that's, that's the best way you can remember, or it is providing a resource there, right? So the firms provide the, uh, the goods and services and thinking on those lines again now, let's, let's take a very nano perspective here, a nano example for um, uh, this better understanding. So if in my economy, I'm producing these three markets, okay, worth $10 each. So what's the market value of, my, uh, of the goods and services produced in my economy? 10, 10, 10, right? So what is the total market value? Price times quantity, it is 30, $30. 10 into 3 here is making it 30. That's my, the value of the output in my economy. People are going to be buying the, these products. This is just a replica right now. So let's say in my economy, this is what was produced. So what's being sold is these three, right? So what's the value of the expenditure of the people here? Yeah, $30, right? And what is the income of the firms? $30. And that's where you can remember the whole idea that uh, income is equal to expenditure and it is also equal to the value of the output. And that's why you can calculate this GDP through three methods. So that's, a, that's the reason that we, we can actually have three approaches to calculate the GDP. Income method, output method, and expenditure method. Now, income method is the simplest and the easiest of all. Where did we talk of income? You can see this. This is where you learned. This is where you talked about the factor payments when you talked about, you know, the the households providing the resources and in turn firms giving them the income. We are talking of here the economy as a whole in totality. So while people may have different income, but in total, it's going to be the same, right? The, for the economy, because it's for the whole economy. Now, uh, to remember the idea of expenditure method, maybe you may want to consider it. Uh, this flow again and look at it is savings 
an expenditure? No, that's what we said. Saving is a dollar not spent. Similarly, the taxes, they are also not a part of uh, spending uh, because you are not getting any goods and services directly for that. Even people who don't pay taxes, I mean, if someone has to think it this way, doesn't the government provide it? Well, the government provides the goods and services, but that's even to the people who do not pay the tax, right? So here it's a complete, you know, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a spending in principle. So uh, the major, uh, major spendings here are, you can see consumption, investment, government spending, and the net exports. It's not just exports, uh, excuse me for that. This is actually net exports, not exports. It's exports minus imports. And the income method has got wages, rent, interest, and profit. Uh, well, you may want to consider uh, uh, the idea of why is it we want to include uh, imports here uh, while we ignore the taxes and the savings. So please get it right here. The purpose of the GDP is to measure the value, market value of goods and services produced within the economy. So when I'm saying within the economy, obviously if I've got goods from other countries, I need to subtract it, right? And the goods that have gone out of my country, I need to add it. And that's why we have the net exports. So the, one more thing you can remember from this easily, this is a two sector model. This is a three sector model. You can see it. this is the four sector model and then it is the five sector model. So the five sector, two sector, three sector, four sector and five sector model as you increase. And the fourth one is you can, the, here when you, the moment you refer to the foreign countries, it is a matter of open economy. The third method is another very simple uh, method though. It is a value addition method or the output method. So the easiest way of remembering it is the market value of final goods and services. But if you wanted to add on the, uh, you know, the value of the output at each stage, we call it value added. You understand this the mark? So you, you account for it. So in stage one, something was, let's say costing you about 10, uh, you know, in stage one, if it was in, um, let me just try and make it through. If it was stage one, maybe you know you had um, um, got something for ten dollars. In stage two, you sold it for fifteen dollars. So the value addition here is five dollars. And in the next one, so forth. So the the bottom line is value addition method is it's the value added at each stage for any production, right? Now back to the idea of economy to understand some more concepts. And what are those concepts? Yes, the roller coaster ride. And, and thinking on those lines, when I was showing you the balloon again and again, you may want to consider this. Uh, can we keep blowing this balloon nonstop? No. What will happen if this, is, if this balloon keeps blowing bigger and bigger? It will burst, right? If, if I keep blowing it over the time, it'll burst. And that is where we need to consider that economies cannot be continuously you know being put in with more and more of money into it because while it is easy to say that the government should spend more and more it may not be appropriate possibly in a certain stages when the economy is already booming and the easiest way of remembering the idea of economies business cycles is the roller coaster or you may want to remember the idea of uh, you know a dragon maybe how it just goes up and down like so that's how typically the economy's business cycles are because it's an inherent upward and a downward trend, uh, an upward swing or a downward swing. Now, why do these swings occur? Because why does the very size of this balloon change? Because of injections or withdrawals. That's the way you look at it. So money coming in money going out so is there more money coming in or is there more money going out of it you may want to remember this whole idea pretty much again on lines of your um, uh, bank account yeah so on your ba in your bank if you're putting more money in and depositing more money in and taking out lesser what happens to your bank balance it goes up right so typically, if, if you are uh, depositing more money, if there's more injection into the flow, 
that would mean the economy is going up just like your bank balance. And if there's more money moving out of this economy, the bank balance goes down. Typically, your economy, in other words, is, you know, I'm just using an analogy, folks. It's not that the economy is a bank, you know it, right? So, yes, so you may want to consider it like a bank account, or we have already visualized the idea of balloons there. And that's where the economic upswings and the downswings occur. And it's easy again to remember upswing. You can see economy is going up, right? Downswing here, economy is going down. Now, typical aspect when you say, when is it going up? When there are more injections, when the more money is coming into the flow. And how is the money coming into flow? Through the investments, through the government spending, through the export earnings, or if the consumption spending has gone up in this economy. And, and when, when, when this is happening, get it right again here, when this is happening, when the economy is having more money in, over the time, what happens? The price level starts going up. And as the price level starts going up, there's a limit to what an economy can produce. That was our first lesson. In simple words, you know, the, the resources are limited. So what happens eventually? The pressure builds on prices. And as the prices go up, what happens? You may need to be saving more. You may actually try to negotiate for higher wages and thus pay more taxes. And if the things are expensive in your country, you will end up buying more goods from other countries. And thus, it would mean imports will increase. So at peak, automatically, the savings will increase, taxes will start going up, and your, your imports start going up, and thus the economy starts going down. So effect of injections, you can see it. injections, that is I, G, and X, it only leads to expansion, and if injections are more, the economy expands, upswing, and if withdrawals are more, economy is going down, contraction. And that's typically the total, you've done circular flow, GDP, and your business cycles. But you may also want to consider as to how, how this economy is managed. For the pure reason, would anyone want to be on a roller coaster ride nonstop? Maybe not. We all want, you know, a, a smooth ride. No one wants that bumpy ride throughout the day, else it's going to be a pain. And that's how typically you could say business cycles would be are required to be corrected or smoothened. And that's where the government roles and the reserve banks roles come in play.